So, um, you know, you can send emails over and over to your elected officials and they'll never respond or, you know, call your the oh. Canada of choice and they'll never respond. But on Twitter, sometimes you'll actually get them to engage um, with you and, and have a discussion. So that's one of the exciting things about Twitter for me. Um, also, it's a way to really promote an issue that is important at that, at that moment um, or an event um, that is important that's happening at that moment. And the way you can do that is by using hashtags. So I know I've talked about hashtags a lot um, recently. On, on the other um, trainings, but I, I will get further into that too um, later on. But I wanted to bring in Jason Call because like I said, he's got a blue check and he's got 15,000 followers. So I wanted um, to him, him to kind of give you an idea of how he uses Twitter and what he thinks is the best part of um, the Twitter platform. Okay. Um, engagement with public figures. Um, if, if you tag them in a tweet, um, you're commenting on some legislation, uh, you know, somebody is reading that account. Now, whether it's the legislators themselves and if they've, they're a smaller uh, following, it probably would be. Some of the larger people probably have staff monitoring it. Um, but what they know is that you put out something and tag them in it and that uh, however many followers you have are going to see that. And so you know, sometimes if you use it as a, you know, a congratulatory thing, they're seeing that and, and they'll like it. But if you're if you're using it as a call out, they also know they've been really publicly called out on something. So, for instance, uh, the other the other day, I've done a bunch of research on how much money the people in the Washington legislature health committees are taking. Um, and I listed it on Twitter. Um, and Emily Randall, who sponsored the fifty three ninety nine bill has not taken a lot of corporate money. Um, in, in fact, her books are pretty clean. Her seat was uh, essentially purchased for her by the Democratic Party. I mean, they've dumped a couple hundred thousand dollars into her race. Who knows where that money is coming from? But as far as direct contributions from health industry PACs, she has not um, taken any. So I listed a bunch of her Senate um, colleagues, uh, health committee colleagues, and the money they've taken, Annette Cleveland, 184,000, uh, June Robinson, 110,000, David Frock, 107,000. I listed all of that. I didn't list her name, but in a subtweet, which, which is a next tweet, I simply tagged her in the post. Well, she got right back to me, and I was not calling her out for taking the money, but her comment to me was, wait, am I, am I a corporate shill now? And so I was able to start a direct conversation with her because I said to her, no, I'm happy that you haven't taken the money, but your colleagues have, and that's why they're not supporting whole Washington. So it's, an in, it's a way to get information directly to them in a way that not only they see, like you send them an email, only they or their staff are getting that email and nobody else necessarily knows. Um, but when you do it in a public way on Twitter, especially when you have the followers um, that I have, uh, they know that potentially 15,000 people are going to see this sort of sideways, you know, are you taking the money too? Are you corrupt too? And I think they need to, they need to know that. Um, Twitter is also a good way to connect with other organizations that are like-minded. For, in, for instance, I just um, uh, started a conversation earlier today with New York's DSA. They're trying to get a single payer in New York. And so I wanted to connect with them about the challenges they are having in their legislature also. Twitter is a good way to start that conversation. You may take the conversation off of Twitter, but Twitter, it, it, it's, it goes really quickly. You know, I mean, the topics move really, really, really quickly. Um, but you know, I mean, people generally and organizations generally, if they're tagged in something and it's relevant to them, they're going to respond in some way. How do you tag? George, are you going to tell us how we tag? Yeah, I'll get into the um, all that, the basics of um, Twitter using it. And um, we're, we're going to create our own tweets and tag people, um, probably just each other to start with. Um, so we're not calling out people like uh, Emily Randall. But I was trying to find that tweet. I couldn't find it. But I, I remember seeing her respond to you, which is which is pretty cool. 
Well, and it and it's what you want. I mean, she's only got 267 followers or something like that, and so here I come in with a blue check and 15,000 followers, and I'm kind of dropping a bomb on her doorstep, um, and she's compelled to respond. So I try and use my large following in that way. You know, um, the other thing about tweets is, is, is if you want to get recognition, you've got to make them, like, short and sweet. Um, you, Twitter is a really good with the character limitations. You don't get a whole lot of like extended posts, like the stuff that you would write on Facebook, you would not put on Twitter because it would take you 82 tweets <laughs> to write a, to write a Facebook post. So you very much get to refine the language that you use in very concise. You, you, you chop out all of like in terms of an editor, you know, you get to chop out all of the extraneous language and you get really to the heart of the matter. Like, what point are you trying to convey? And so Twitter, if you really want to convey your point well and have people recognize it and respond to it and retweet it, you want to be very, very uncluttered with your messaging. Yeah, I think that's an important point. Um, people aren't on Twitter to read a post that, you know, you do, if you want to make something lengthier because you need a bigger explanation, usually people will put parentheses at the end of a tweet, like one slash X, and that'll be the first one. And then it'll do a second one. But I, I highly recommend if you can get something just simple in one tweet, that's way more powerful because it gets a lot more attention that way. People aren't on Twitter to read um, a novel. Um, so, I, thank you so much, Jason. If you want to stay with us and hear the rest of it, you can. Otherwise, I know that I just caught you kind of off guard. And <laughs> yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go unload groceries right now. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm gonna use you to to show an example of how you at someone. I just took a screenshot, and I'm gonna Please thank do. Jason for for being with One Pair States today um, and helping us out with our Twitter training. Thank you All very right. much. Thank you. Good luck with the rest thank of it. Too. Thanks, Georgia. No Good problem. Luck. And just Good so you know, campaign. yeah, Jason Call is running for Congress here um, against Larson, Rick Larson. Um, he is a fantastic progressive. I've known him for a long, long time. How do you at someone or how do you tag someone? I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. I took a screenshot of Jason while he was talking. Um, so I'm going to go up here and tweet. Thanks. Jason Call, and because we follow each other, or I follow him, he's followed me back. Um, but because I follow him, he comes up right away. So I can just tag him for helping. And I'm gonna tag one pair of states because we have our own Twitter account. Another thing you can do, so you can make sure that organizations or candidates or whoever you're tagging um, will see it, is you can tag people on photos. So I'm going to tag um, Paul Washington. Oh, wait, so I didn't see. So that was his tagging? So I can tag him in the, the actual tweet, and I can tag him in the photo, too. So um, not every organization or individual allows you to tag in photos, but I think he has it set up so I can. So I'm going to, um, once I put in a photo, this comes up. You can add a description or you can tag people. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. I'm gonna tag Paul Washington. I'm gonna tag Jason Call, one pair of states. And I think that's good for now. And then I can do Medicare for all as a hashtag. So now hashtags, the, the way that I like to think about hashtags is they're a filing system. So I'm gonna tweet this and I'm gonna show you what I mean by a filing system. So once I have that tweeted, I can um, course it. So this is my pinned tweet. So the, the reason why I, um, the tweet I didn't just put out isn't on top is because I have a pinned tweet, which I'll show you how to do later on. But so the second tweet is gonna be the tweet that I just, sent out. And I can click on that hashtag. You see how it's a blue hyperlink. You can click and on it. that's the screenshot you took? Yeah. So um, 
if you want to learn how to do a screenshot. I know how. Okay. <laughs> All right. If anybody else needs to know, if there's a print screen um, key on your keyboard that you can do that. Or what, if you're on your phone, you know, you just hit simultaneous buttons and it'll take a screenshot of whatever you're looking at. So um, I'm clicking on that hashtag though. And it will pull up all of the recent tweets, um, generally organized by what um, tweet has gotten the most attention um, uh, that has used that particular hashtag. So um, you see this one has 27 retweets. It has Medicare for all. So you can kind of see all of the recent discussions around Medicare for all. So hashtags are great. Like let's say you have an event that's going to have like a ton of people going to it. You want to let them know um, to use a particular hashtag so they can get updated. They can click on that hashtag and they can see what's happening with that event at that time. Like let's say you have a huge march that you're putting together um, like, and you want to, everybody use the hashtag March for Medicare. Anybody who's um, part of that event or following that event can click on that hashtag and see the latest information about what's happening with that event. Also, it helps you trend that particular hashtag. And you'll get in the news if thousands of people are, um, hash, are hashtagging March for Medicare for All or whatever the hashtag is then um, that will get press, press attention because that press is paying attention to what's trending. Um, so that's another benefit of using hashtags. But really for me, it's about um, paying attention to what's happening around the Medicare for all single payer movement. Um, I, I check in with hashtags often because there might be a news story that I missed that somebody hashtag Medicare, Medicare for all. Like currently there's um, that story that um, 40% of the deaths from COVID-19 could have been avoided. Um, and so that's one of the news stories that might be shared with this hashtag Medicare for all. And I can find that and then share it to my organization pages like whole Washington or one payer states. So it's kind of a way to stay up on what's happening on a particular issue instantaneously. I don't know if any of you are on Facebook, but I find that Sometimes I see posts that are three days old. <laughs> it's very annoying. <laughs> I'm like, why am I seeing this now? This happened three days ago. Well, Twitter is instantaneous um, and you can really, really stay up um, on, on the news of what's happening this second. So um, any questions about hashtags so far? So you put it at the end of a message. Mm -hmm. But if I'm not, so that's where I put it. I don't put it on, I don't just sort of come on and say, okay, hashtag and type it in somewhere and it'll ring it all up or what? You can put it anywhere in that message. Like I could have said- a message, but you have to put it in a message. Yeah, you have to put it in your tweet. So if you say like, um, if I had said, thank you, Jason Call for um, participating in our hashtag Medicare for all, um, at one pair states, blah, blah, blah. It's, that's fine. Wherever you put it in the tweet is fine. Um, and people can click on it. And, and also if a tweet is, or a hashtag is trending, it's a way to get more attention for your particular tweet. Um, and that's something that I wanna go over real quick because that is an important part of using a hashtag. So um, you, on the right hand side here, you can see what's happening. If you click show more, Right now, I've already looked at this, nothing really is happening that applies to us, but sometimes you'll see something that's like maybe Sunday fun day is trending, the hashtag Sunday fun day. <laughs> and like there's been 15,000 tweets about Sunday fun day. You can, you know, figure it out a way to put that in your tweet about Medicare for all or one pair of states like, hey, I just got off of a one pair states fun, Sunday fun day phone call. <laughs> and then at one pair states or figure out some way to work that in. And anybody who's kind of keeping track of that Sunday fun day hashtag will see your tweet and they might retweet it or they might learn something about one pair states. They might say, oh, what is that? And then they'll find out more information about your organization. So that's kind of one way to make hashtags work for you. Betty? Is, there a, is there a section that says what's trending? Yep. 
So right now, cancel culture is trending. I don't know how we would put that into anything. <laughs> so, um, but sometimes there'll be something in here that you can adapt to work for um, whatever you want to talk about, kind of co-opt the hashtag. Yes, Betty? To say, <clears throat> to say you had a specific event that you wanted to publicize, and it was about, you know, publicly funded universal health care. So uh, one question is, I think you have said that every single character counts. So if it's a long thing like Medicare for all, it takes up more of your space than MFA, right? Uh, okay. Yes, that is true, but you don't, okay, go ahead with your then question. Then the other question is, um, <clears throat> how do you decide which one of the many different things to use, the MFA or single payer or Medicare for all, or how do you decide which one? Um, so typically uh, Medicare for all, F-O-R all, is the one people use the most. Um, and I, I would definitely stick with, um, even though it is longer, so it takes up more of your character limit, I would stick with what um, the movement leaders are using most often. Um, mm -hmm. Just because the, the file system, you kind of want everything filed under the same thing. I, I see Medicare with the number four all often as well. But when or MFA, M4A, yeah. I see that too, but I, I don't see it as often. So oh. just to, as somebody who's kind of database driven and that's how my mind works, I like to make sure that things stay organized under one kind of term um, and that we're all using the same term so that that, that gets a bigger boost. So if we're all using like separate hashtags, then they're not all gonna trend. Okay. Um, so I see Medicare for all spelled out for all um, most often. And usually yes. when, when NNU or Bernie or Camilla Diapol do a hashtag about Medicare for all, they usually spell the whole thing out. So- Does capitalization um, matter? No, it doesn't, but it does, it, sometimes it helps clarify the hashtag. Yeah, it's not yeah. gonna matter, it's not gonna, like if you um, capitalize the F, -O, the F and F-O-R and um, A and then all, it's, it'll go under the same hashtag, but it might be clearer for somebody who's reading right. it. Like some of the tweets, some of the hashtags get really long and it's kind of hard to figure out <laughs> what I do where the one time. word stops and the next word starts. So if it clarifies it, Definitely do it, it's not gonna matter. Any more hashtag questions? Okay, let's see what's next. Okay, so let's talk about our profiles. Um, this is a good thing to do as soon as you open your account or right now, if you already have an account, make sure that you have a banner image and a profile image. And I like to put little emojis. Um, lots of people like to put little emojis after their name. And you can do that um, in the edit profile area. Um, put your bio and put hashtags in the bio, any hashtags that are important to you. Um, websites that you wanna promote. If you're part of Healthcare for All Oregon, put Healthcare for All Oregon website in here. Um, you can also put another website in the website area. So I have two websites. I have one pair states and wholewashington.org. Um, so that's just, it's, it's good for people to be able to see um, when you make a comment, those things, because those things are the very first, like those little emojis. Um, are the very first thing that they'll see. Um, they have a purpose? Um, it just, sometimes they do, like there's a um, donut hole Twitter, which is a, like the <laughs> kind of centrist Democrats, <laughs> they use a donut. Um, socialists use little roses, um, that sort of thing. So it's kind of a way to kind of identify like your political leanings. For me, I have an apple and a stethoscope and yarn because um, apple represents whole Washington, stethoscope, obviously, medicine, and then yarn is because I am part of Red Berets for Medicare for All. So that's 
they all have individual meanings for me. A lot of people probably have no clue what those emojis mean when they see them. But a lot of people, if they see a red rose, they'll know immediately you're a socialist <laughs> um, or you're part of DSA rather. Um, so sometimes they have meaning, sometimes, you know, it's just personal. So. What did you say the progressives are? Um, DSA is usually a red rose. Oh, okay. So there's not a different one for the progressives versus the DSA. I haven't seen one specifically for progressives, but um, yeah, just red rose is a pretty typical one. For the, the red rose is pretty specific. I would be careful with it if you don't want to be tagged as a socialist. Hmm. Yeah, um, I see a lot of DSA with that, um, with the red rose. Um, and then, you know. It's like PDA would use something else then, right? Yeah. Let's go to PDA. Let's see if they have any. And see, here's Michael Letty. He has Medicare for All spelled out. Does it matter if you've got it spelled out with spaces in between or? It, it won't work if you put spaces. And if a space it thinks you're starting something else. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. If it's a hashtag, you have to keep all the letters together. All right. It doesn't matter if you capitalize every other one, that's fine. Um, you can but, put underscores if you want. Yeah. It takes up more space. Yeah, and not many people use it. So that's, um, you know, the mm -hmm. issue with underscores. But, but there's a whole Twitter sphere called Donut Hole Twitter. So um, yeah, if you ever see anybody with a donut in their um, profile, be wary. <laughs> what, what does it mean again? <laughs> it's like the neoliberal centrist Oh, die a hard can't suit nation sort of thing. Hmm. Um, but uh, Did Pelosi use one. What's that? Does Pelosi have one? Um, I I would doubt it. I would doubt she would. Is that kind it, of would that be a hashtag Karen? <laughs> <laughs> I I would. It's probably safe to say that. <laughs> um. Looks like I, let's see if I can find her. I wonder if AOC has a, I don't know why I can't find her account. That's cool. I bet she has a oh, red there she is. There she, yeah, she doesn't have any emojis. No. What's that yeah. round thing after she her? She has a blue check. Yep. Oh, blue check. Okay. Um, most elected officials will have that blue check and um, many of the bigger organizations will have that blue check. But like I said, right now, they're not, they're not doling any of those out, unfortunately. Um, but let's see Alexandria Ocasio. No emojis. emojis either. Well, she has 100% and I, and a dollar sign, but, um, yeah, I'm kind of surprised that, that she doesn't have a red rose. But um, well, you said yeah, she yeah. had hundred percent and a dollar sign. Where's that? Yeah, oh. th this little no lobbyist money. Okay, yeah. So, um, but they're just kind of fun to put in there. Um, they might have just personal meaning to you, or just a few of your friends will know what it means. But um, I, I like to to put mine in there. Um. Okay, so let's talk about increasing our following. So the quickest way to do that is to follow other people. Um, so you could go to someone like AOC's account and you can see um, all the people that she follows or, you know, it also has suggestions over here. Um, so you can go to following um, and you can just start clicking all these. You can just follow all of them. And a lot of the times when you follow people, they'll follow you back almost right away. Um, and you can, after a while, if you see that you followed someone and they haven't followed you back, you can unfollow them if, they're, if it's not somebody who you really were interested in following anyways. But that's the fastest way to increase your followers. The other fast way is to use those hashtags. So if you're hashtagging Medicare for all and somebody's keeping track of that hashtag, they'll see you tweeting about it and they'll say, oh, this is probably somebody that I want to follow and be friends with. 
So they'll follow you for that. And then you follow them back. That's kind of a polite thing to do unless, you know, you can always look at their, what they've tweeted about and say, mm, maybe I'm not going to follow this person back. Maybe they are following 2000 people and only have 10 followers. So maybe that's not an account you want to follow back. Or maybe they say a lot of weird stuff you don't want in your feed. So you don't follow them back. But a lot of the times you'll want to follow them back because it's kind of like a polite Twitter thing to do. Um, another way is to be part of a chat group. I, we're part, uh, I'm part of a bunch of chat groups right now. And we do have a one payer state chat, chat group. So let me see. It's not very active, which is what a uh, reason I'm really happy to have this training. So maybe we can kind of get that a little bit more active. Yeah, I think um, we started that chat room during the last time you gave us a, a tutorial or a presentation or whatever, and I don't think anybody's touched it. I looked at it after that to see whether there was anything on it, and there was nothing new, and I haven't looked again. Yeah, on the last, it looks like I put something in there on November 19th, 2020. But let me tell you a little bit about why these chat groups are so important. It's because a lot of the times when you send out a tweet, um, there's so much happening on Twitter that even the people who follow you won't see it. So if you have one of these chat groups and you put one of your tweets that you think is important and needs to get amplified into this chat group, it's guaranteed that the other people in the chat group will see your tweet and they'll be able to click on it, click on it, and just give it a retweet immediately. It's that easy. So it makes it really um, a lot more simple to get the word out about something that's happening with your organization um, or a message that you want everybody to see very quickly. Um, that it just it just guarantees that message gets out there. So, so actually, hold on, hold on. You said it guarantees. Is there an automatic notification, or are you still counting on the person going and looking for it? Like, well, as long as they're logged into Twitter. Oh, but I'm not always logged in, I don't think. Or if, I, if I'm logged in, it's not like necessarily on like in a tab, in a tab or anything. Yeah, so if you're logged in and you are at this screen and somebody sends a message, it'll come up with a little notification right on that message. Yeah, but I'm on this screen for roughly 10 minutes out of a month. So that's <laughs> not really going to catch me. <laughs> yeah, so... If you, maybe we need to think about logging in once a day <laughs> and seeing oh, if there were <laughs> any messages that are waiting. Um, I know it's kind of a heavy lift because we're all so busy and social media does not seem that really important. But go ahead, Barbara. Like, like Facebook will send me a notification of some random, um, you know, things that people have posted. Will Twitter send a note? And I get notifications from Twitter about some random people I happen to follow you, like maybe five a day or something. Mm -hmm. Is there some way that Twitter can be set to notify me if something goes in the chat group? Um, probably. Um, I would have to look at how to set that up. But, okay. um, and, you know, you, you can set your personal notifications um, based on what you want. Like I have all my notifications turned off for everything because I do check in very often and I don't need them to notify me about something. Um, but yeah, I think that just, go, that's in your personal settings, whether you're on your computer or your phone. Um, if you're on your iPhone, then you would go to settings and notifications. And then I think you can set what kind of notifications you get from each platform that you are part of or each app that you have on your phone. So, so Georgia, I, I think I get a notification on my email when somebody responds to something I wrote. Is that possible? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought I thought that was so, but I don't write very much on Twitter. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it does it for messages though. Um I think that you can get an alert every time you get a new message in your Twitter inbox, but mm -hmm. um I'm not sure. Um so I'm adding people to our one pair states chat so that um once we have we're gonna do a test tweet and we're gonna all share this tweet in this chat and then 
make sure we're all following each other. It'll be really easy to follow each other once we click on, on the individual tweets, and then we can learn how to retweet each other. So is it better to write a reply or to retweet, which is more helpful to the other person for publicizing things? Do both if you can. If you have time, both is great. What's the difference between retweeting and sharing? Um, nothing. You can share with a comment. Um, I like to do both if it's a great tweet. What I'll do is I'll retweet it and then I'll retweet it with a comment. Like, um, so the first time will just be a retweet. So it just shares it on my timeline. The next time I'll retweet with a comment and I'll say something like, so, something here, I'll, I'll give, I'll show you an example of when I did like that today. Um, because I really wanted to bring attention to a specific issue. A lot of the times, a just a simple retweet won't get a lot of attention. But if you retweet with a comment, just like on Facebook, you know, you do a share, nobody really sees it. Um, but if you share with a comment, uh, it beats the algorithms a little bit. Um, Facebook tends to not share show people just plain shares, but they'll show um, shares with comments a lot more. I, I retweeted and another uh, screen came up. It says quote tweet. What does that mean? Yeah, so if you wanted at that point, you can say, this was a great tutorial or Georgia Davenport is an awful teacher. Oh. If you click on that, if you tap on it with your finger, it should open up that tweet. And that's where you'll see this screen where you can like it, you can retweet it. And I'm gonna retweet Betty's. And then I'm gonna comment, thanks for joining the office hours tutorial with one. And then reply. I'm on my phone, how do I get to a group? So on the, the bottom of your screen, there should be on the bottom right, there should be a little envelope icon. Um, and if you hit that, do you see the envelope icon? Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to resend this one tweet one more time, just to, to make sure that Alice can follow along. So once, once you see that tweet, everyone click on it, and some of you have already done this. So disregard if you've already done it. So once you click on it, you'll be able to retweet it, quote it, and like it. Um, Betty and Barbara have already um, commented on it. And if you want to do what I was talking about before, which is retweet with a quote, you can quote tweet. Say, still which one was that? having a lot of fun on this Zoom office hours. I don't see where to retreat, retweet. <clears throat> um, so see the little two arrows that kind of make a box? Oh, click on the, click on the tweet with your finger, like tap it, tap on the tweet. Up here? Just turn your phone around. There, there you go, there you go. Oh, you just tap on it. Yep. Hey, Georgia, when I retweeted your tweet, did you get a notification? Yep. So okay, can, so you can see where it says, thanks, Georgia, great tutorial? Yeah, there we go. So okay. I'm gonna retweet that. Um, cool. So how, how do you retweet? So there's a little box that's like made out of two arrows, and that's the one you want to click on. And you can either just retweet it. that You don't have to type a comment if you just retweet it. If you want to type comment, um, or to quote it with a comment. So the retweet goes back to the person who sent it to you? Um, it'll end up on your wall, like your feed. So when you retweet it, if I go to my tweets and replies, you can see I retweeted Henry and it ends up on my feed. And anybody who's looking at my feed will see what I've retweeted or tweeted. How do we know that we're on your feed? Um, well, you can, where are you at right now? If you click on my handle, you can go to my feed and see all my tweets. On your handle. Like my name. 
Yeah, so if you click on anybody's handle, um, you can go to their tweets and their tweets and replies and see everything that they've said. Oh, look at the cute couple. <laughs> so can you retreat a, a retreat? I don't even know how to say that. Yeah. Re, re, <laughs> yeah. re, re, okay, you know what I meant. Yeah, um, you can, and, and that's actually a good technique. If you have a tweet that you really, really like, um, you can come back to it like in a few days. Um, like let's say you're a trying to bird dog your congressional representative to get on Medicare for all. So you write this great tweet and then in a few days they haven't replied, you just go back to that tweet and retweet it with another comment, like still waiting on your reply, Carson, uh. <laughs> what are you doing? You have nothing better than to answer me on Twitter <laughs> but um, sometimes they will answer you. It's the craziest thing. It's awesome. You know, like you can you can get into kind of little Twitter debates with your elected officials at times. Um, and it really works well with candidates because candidates um, are real, are very active on their Twitter account. Um, so if you want to ask them a direct question about like, will they co-sponsor Medicare for all? And um, that's a good place to to do exactly this you're far more likely to get a response from them on Twitter than any other platform. I could get to some of your tweets, Georgia, but I don't see the one that I sent you. I thought I should see all of them. <clears throat> that you sent me. Mike, you'll see it on your own profile. Oh, okay. So when you retweet something, it'll show up on your profile. Oh, okay, thanks. Um, so real quick, I want you all to take one tweet. If you can, if you want to come up with a new one, that would be great. Um, you know, make a new tweet. You can use that big blue tweet button. You can make a new tweet or you can share one that you've already made. But um, just so that I'm sure that you guys can go through this and you can share it in the chat. If you want to take a second and make a tweet. Why and then what? Why is my blue tweet button grayed out? Can you click on it? Yeah, no, it doesn't click. Huh. Can you go to home? I think that's where I am. OK. Is there an area at the top where you can click to start t tweeting? I won't. Oh, do I have to say something and then tweet? Yeah. So who, uh, everyone can apply. I want something that everyone can, re can reply to, right? Sure. Um, is there something that's been on your mind or a congressional representative you wanted to? How about if out? I brag that I had a letter in the published in the paper? That's awesome. Like if I were you, I would say, check out mine new article and then I'd put that in there and then I'd tweet it. Um, but then once it's tweeted, oh, actually, I can, so underneath the tweet that you made, yep. there's like, there's the comment, retweet, heart. And then there's like a half box with an arrow. So once you make the tweet, once you all make the tweet, go to the tweet and find the half box with the arrow up. Are you talking about what other people can see, but I can't see those things because I didn't made the tweet? Um, no, you should be able to see it. So what, go, why don't you go ahead and make that tweet? Do it in my other feed, like copy and paste yeah. it into the other place? Yeah, you need to put it on actual Twitter. Okay, so do you see the tweet? Yep. Okay, you see the comment? Retweet, like, and then the yeah. half mm -hmm. box. Okay, so click that half box with the arrow. I'm retweeting my own tweet? No, just click the half box with the arrow. Oh, the yeah. half box, share. Yeah. And then copy link to tweet. Okay, mm -hmm. and it'll copy that to the clipboard. Then okay. you go Where to you our chat. Our chat group. So I get there by um, uh, so searching. Um, there should be the envelopes over here. Oh, on that side. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, 
um, says I don't have any messages. So it should be at the notifications, no? Um, do you see a place where you can go to one pair of states Twitter group? Like right here? Uh, let me look at yours to see where that is. Where would it be? So, so when you clicked on messages? Okay, so yeah, on messages. And there. it says one payer states Twitter group. So I click on that. And then there's, once you see this part, and then go to the very bo bottom where it says start a new message. Uh, start a new message. And press right. control and V at the same time. There Good job. Is. So if I click on that, I can like it and I can retweet it. I, I have an article I, I wrote recently too. Should I try that? Yeah, but make, make sure you make a, your tweet like Barbara did. Check out my letter to the editor or whatever, my article, and then link to the article. Then go to the little half box with share. Copy link to tweet? Yep. Okay. And then you put that in the message yeah. box. Yeah. And then press enter. Well, he didn't make the tweet yet. I'm just giving him the run through. I, I, okay. You're good, Henry, right? You you understand you have to make the tweet first? Yeah, I, I did. And then I oh, just. Okay. Oh, there you go. Okay. That's it? Cool. Good job. So now, okay, so now I want to like his. So there has that little, that's the react? Yep. You, you can heart it and then you can retweet it. How about I just um, thumbs up it? Well, I don't know if there's, oh, that's in the chat. Yeah, but so click oh, no, on it. It was, it was in the, it was, oh, it was in the chat room, right? Yeah, so if you click on that and it'll take you to the actual tweet the and tweet. that's where you, that's where you want to like it. it. Okay. And, and just, and if, these are great in the future. If you can think about putting a hashtag in there somewhere, um, um, that that would be something that you might want to think about if there's something that's um, yeah. trending that is related, you can use that hashtag. Okay, thank you. So we should all we should all say goodbye. Thank you. Okay. okay. And all right. So thanks, Bye. Man. Yeah, great session. Bye. Thank you.